Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Canada Cup Season 6. We're here with a lower bracket matchup as we get towards the tail end of this fine season. Not today versus Infamous. We've got a South American matchup here. This is a best of three series, the only series tonight, and it should be a good one. I'm Zayori tonight, joined by Purge. We're filling in for Mod as he has some stuff to take care of, and I couldn't be more excited. I haven't gotten to cast too much Canada Cup in the last few days, so I'm excited to see what these teams have. Bring it out. Purge, my man, how you feeling tonight? Oh, shit. Nope. Oh, there we go. Hi, Purge. Hey, man. I got my team speaks confused, and I was talking to the wrong person. How's it going? I just did that intro to myself. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, I'm doing Whoops. Well. Uh, that's modest done that to me before as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, I thought I unmuted. Wait, where is he? Oh, whoops. That's the wrong Zyori. Okay, good. So not today versus Infamous, man. How are you feeling about this matchup? Pretty good. Uh, excited to see how not today's progressing as a team. Um, they've looked very strong sometimes, very iffy other times. So I'm I'm anticipating seeing uh, how much they've improved and how they can deal with things like Batrider. It's a hero that they, at least in the last series that I casted them, they picked consistently tons and tons of Batrider. So they don't get it. Uh, it's going to be Lundrid instead. Yeah, Batrider Dazzle, not a bad setup here. What is the best way to, to deal with Lone Druid right now? I feel like he's just he's just hard to deal with in general. I mean, what what's the, the primary hero that you think of to try and lock him down? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I have any heroes in particular. Uh, Lich is a really good support to deal with it, both because of Frost Armor slowing the movement and the attack speed of the bear, but also because Chain Frost bouncing between them um, should usually usually result in a Lone Druid kill. So with that said, also Magic Nukes, that's why Lich is so good, since Lone Druid's armor is so high, especially with his battle cry. Um, a little bit of damage over time can help as well. That way he can't just resummon his bear if you want to punch the bear a little bit. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different ways to deal with it. Um, but the biggest one is just generally keep your armor up, um, have some kind of ability to save allies like with a force staff or with a glimmer cape. And then uh, maybe some early gank can also really pressure him and shut him down as well. Okay. Well, definitely some kill potential with the Bat Rider Dazzle picked up. Trying to look at Infamous. I wonder if that's actually a stand-in that they have there. Every time I cast these guys, they have different names. Of course, Zetok and Greedy are appropriately tagged up here. I wonder who X is. That's not a name that I'm familiar with. Not Today actually has a stand-in as well. That's the first time I've seen Infamous actually tagged up in at least like, like since Frank for Major. Like, yeah. I just haven't... <laughs> I, they just don't bother to put their tag on. It's weird. Yeah. It's, well, sometimes they use the wrong names. Like, they tag up as each other and then swap yeah. around so you don't know who's playing what or doing what lane. I guess that, that is a layer of unpredictability, though. <laughs> it's it makes our jobs difficult sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, very typical anti-offlaners banned. Darkseer banned. Uh, Viper and Razor also banned. Very, two very common heroes that Infamous grabs. They usually aim for very strong early games because they do like running at their opponents. So... Not too surprising to see both Razor and Viper taken out of the pool. Yeah. Um, maybe there's some other early game carry that they'll go for. A Gyrocopter is very likely as well. It hasn't been banned yet, so yeah. either team could grab that. And Juggernaut could also be a possibility for these teams. I don't like Jug versus Lone Druid, though. It, it just doesn't work very well. If you Omni Slash, um, he's got tons of armor. Um, if you get rooted, it goes through spin. I mean, it's right. okay because if he roots you first, then you spin your set. But... I just don't feel like that's the way to go. I think there's just a lot safer carries that you can go for. Okay. Now Queen of Pain now. The fourth band for Infamous alongside the Dark Seer. We'll see what they grab here. Still a pretty open-ended draft. They can put that Bat Rider off lane. They can put him mid. Probably going to be off lane, most likely. Um, I mean, it could be mid, I guess. There's a couple teams that do put Batrider mid. I but... think they ran it mid last time I, I cast this with Mott maybe uh, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago or something. So it's a possibility. Ooh, Slardar. Okay. So it could be the offlane Slardar in mid Batrider. Or safe lane Slardar, offlane Bat. Yep. Slardar is great versus Lundrude as well. You just super lower the armor on his bear and you can kill it. Chain stunning, it works out nicely, and uh, obviously the stuns are great to delay the battle cry. Uh, Montpac's pointing out there's no Chen banned or picked or banned yet. Oh wow! And also the fact that Viper and Razor has been banned, and there's no OD on the draft. I think that's a really good point because those are two of the heroes that are very commonly grabbed to try to be competitive with OD. And OD, I think, is actually pretty good against Lone Druid because um, if somebody gets rooted, you you banish them. Um, you also do pure damage, which cuts right through all the armor. Mm. Um, I think those are two good reasons that OD is not bad against Lundrid and maybe an option. I wouldn't necessarily say it's synergizable with Slardar because <laughs> a lot of your damage is pure, so that minus armor isn't as useful. But 
it's definitely you know, a possible pick and decent against oracle as well just banish the guy that's ulti um buy some time for him to stick around and then maybe try to kill him after yeah that's a good I, point. it's looking like an od pick now definitely with beastmaster in there yeah could be pretty scary for not today Infamous, how do they react here? They've obviously got this minus armor synergy. I feel like they need something to... I guess Slardar and Batrider is a lot of catch already, but some kind of burst damage just to nuke somebody while they're in the lasso could be good here. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. The, after lasso and Slytherin Crush, they don't have a whole lot else, so uh, possibly a core that can cover that would be good. Maybe something like a Skeleton King or a Wraith King could be a possibility, hmm. but no surprise here at all. Bounty Hunter is one of the most common picks that Infamous do grab. Um, usually Z talk playing that roams very very well on it and he can get his team a lot of early game advantage um, yeah. and another really good thing about bounty hunter this game is that if you track the lone druid or the enemy heroes that a lot of times you're going to be able to ch run away from them um, and I don't think you can track the bear but if you could um, it would allow you to get away from him more easily so I kind of like the the track another cool thing you can do is you can lasso a guy track the guy, and then Batrider runs even faster. So there's a lot of really cool oh, integrated yeah. little good ways that Bounty Hunter synergizes as well with Infamous's draft. Yeah, that is kind of a cool little synergy. I never really thought about with that Rider, but definitely makes his job easier. So now we see for not today. You mentioned the OD. If they don't pick it here, at least a chance that Infamous can ban it out here before we go into the fifth pick. I mean, it's, it's maybe not so likely against Bounty, though, because Bounty can pressure it a lot. And they could also grab some kind of sustain here to go with their push alongside the Oracle. Like they could grab a, a Witch Doctor or something like that. Uh, Witch Doctor could work, yeah. Thank God Sir Action Slacks almost talked to us. That would have been really awful. <laughs> um, Witch Doctor would be okay, but I think they're a little bit lacking disables that are instant. Because if I were to grab somebody, Witch Doctor usually can't react in time. And mm -hmm. even if he does... That slow projectile speed means that the cask isn't going to hit him before he gets out of there. So you think it's something more conventional, like a, a vengeful spirit or something? Nice. Oh, Night Stalker. Okay, that works. That's great. Radiant really good pick. Um, gives him vision of Batrider as he's going for lassos. Um, you can hit him with the slow. He's pretty tanky himself. I wouldn't say Night Stalker is amazing versus Slardar. Slardar is kind of a counter because Night Stalker is high HP, medium armor. So his amp damage should cut right through that. Um, but I think it's a pretty solid pick. If Ten they get a gem and an eggs, Bounty Hunter has a really tough time. Yeah. All right. Final bands and final picks around the corner here. Purge Infamous looking for their final core. Still a little bit open-ended how they want to set up these lanes here. What are you thinking now with the Bat Rider Slardar? Are you still thinking it'll be off the off-lane bat? Um like are they looking to pick up a mid here most likely? I mean, I guess if you look at not today's draft, uh, they they could have mid Beastmaster, it could be mid Night Stalker, could be off-lane Night Stalker, could be off-lane Beastmaster. A uh, could be off-lane. Their, their lane can go anywhere, so <laughs> yeah. Infamous predicting that, I would say that Batrider is bad against Lone Druid, but he's okay against Beastmaster and Night Stalker. It's probably how I, how I would characterize that. Um, so I, I don't think they have to go bat mid. It's not a bad idea, though, that you can guarantee a really fast blink dagger that way. Um, and with Bounty Hunter there, there's actually a ton of kill potential, if you think about it. Both of those heroes, Night Stalker and Beast, with a Janata slow and Batrider chasing somebody, they could easily kill either of those two heroes. And I think this is why they banned the fuck, because... Not today is in a position where, like, they could play those heroes mid, but with Bounty being in the game, in addition to Bat being a semi-offensive hero, they just banned out all the heroes that Bat's not going to do anything against mid, which is Quap and Puck. So maybe they'll grab a different hero that'll work mid against it, but I, it definitely, based on the bans, it definitely seems like Bat's going to be the mid hero. Yeah, what about uh, not today picking Lena here against Bat? Doesn't she she do pretty well against in that matchup? Why? Because she's just the already on fire? Mostly, yeah, that mostly the range is what I was thinking. Sit back and just nuke him because he's got range issues. Oh, that's a decent point, but I am not sure. With Bounty Hunter, I would say no. Since yeah, she has low good. armor, um, she can get punished a little bit. And also, once you start chasing, she has to turn around to land the stun, and then you can just run circles. I would say that um, Light Striker is not really a good solution. Like, you can stand from range, but you're quickly going to run out of mana, and uh, at that point... You know, okay. it's not a good thing. Although so. I, I like the fire explanation better, I'm not gonna lie. I mean that's that's a number one reason. I was just giving you reasons four and five, really. Gotcha. Alright. That's why you buy the Arcana. <laughs> yeah. The counter bat rider. Oh, that'll be the day. Alright, twenty seconds here for Infamous. We'll see how they round out this draft. Um any hmm. disables or stuns would be really good. Um I guess offlane starter wouldn't be terrible considering it's an oracle. 
um, as the support and probably Night Stalker. I think the Night Stalker is going to try to counteract what Bounty Hunter is doing in the early game. Maybe some mid pressure. So I would like a carry. Ooh. Oh, okay. the Death Prophet. Wow. How did we like forget that. about her? She made it all the way through. I like this. I think that's a really good pick. Um, can, well, she'll be survivable, obviously. You can cover with a Dazzle. Um, track's going to help her chase people down very easily. Spirit Siphon will keep her HP up. The damage on not today is not very burst heavy right now. Oracle, obviously, is a high damage for support. And Night Stalker a little bit as well. But Lone Druid is, is more of a damage over time kind of hero. And while the the roots are going to be useful against Death Prophet, I think they're going to be able to keep her alive generally. And the synergy between Sardar and Death Prophet is definitely the exorcism is always going to do a lot of damage. So yep. I like this pick here. It's it's a core that can be aggressive, can frontline, can chase, can stay alive. Yeah. A lot of damage over time. Good utility. Great pick. Yeah, it really rounds out this draft well. The synergy you talked about and it fits that minus armor so what do we do there it is od final pick for not today so you're talking about it earlier it did make it through and their final choice wow i like the pick um you can banish out whoever barrett or lassos that's one way that you can solve some problems if somebody gets silenced or something you can save them in that way as well um od will do pretty well against batrider mid because anytime batrider is going on you you just cast astral and walk away for four seconds so i don't really see him dying in that lane and same thing goes when a bounty shows up. Banish the bounty, get a last hit, or something like that. There's a lot of solutions that uh, the OD provides for not today. Not to mention the burst damage that they kind of needed. Okay. So I think it's a pretty good pick. Yeah. I also really like the Dazzle with the Death Prophet on the side of Infamous. It reminds me a little bit of the Dazzle Alchemist, because he can regen so fast. And same with DP. Every so often, you'll see Dazzle keep her alive just long enough for the Exorcism heal to come in, or just buy her that time, and it can completely turn things around. More so than other he heroes that don't have that kind of burst healing that DP can pull out. So... Yeah, some potential there for sure. She's still going to have a little bit of armor problems. Um, obviously, weave is a really good solution against that. But yeah. death prophets are usually forced in the mid game to bind uh, magic immunity, yules, a little bit of movement speed, maybe getting an octarine core. But it's somewhere in that mid game where you have about two medium sized items like BKB yules, where you are just dying a little bit fast to physical damage. The bright side is that BKB also covers a lot of the damage Odie's providing. So I think death prophets in a decent position this game. Um, but she is going to have to get a BKB at some stage for her yeah. to be survivable and for her to be reliable. So based on draft alone here, Purge, what do you think and who are you favoring? I like the infamous draft better, personally, but you never really know how they're going to execute it. They might play extremely well. They might feed just a little bit, and that leads them to a commanding loss. Yeah. Um, I, I like the Not Today draft as well, though. I think they, they have some decent synergies, and they have some good uh, gank potential. Um, but I think the, the big interaction comes down to how well the mid lane goes. If OD gets shut down, it's going to be a really rough game for not today. And if Infamous gets shut down, I think they can farm a little bit better. Yeah. Um, depending I, on the LD's acceleration. I, I think right now Bounty Hunter can be a, a little bit of a gamble pick. As you talked about in the draft, it's a comfort pick for Infamous, but that's a hero that when he shines looks incredible, and when uh, he gets shut down early, he really looks looks the opposite. So. We'll see how he does in the mid lane. He's got some observers and sentries all ready to go. And I imagine not today have some of their own. Yep, Night Stalker already has a, a dust of appearance as well. So they're they're equipped to deal with this bounty hunter, at least out of the gate. They can definitely pressure him in the mid lane. Um, bounty did buy a stout shield, though. So harass on him is going to make him a little bit more survivable than most people expect. Yeah, yeah, this build is pretty strong. Orb of Venom, stout shield, lets you do a lot in those first couple levels. I was all right, one bounty apiece, one to the DP, one to the OD. So they'll be headed mid. Looks like it will be Bat Rider down in the safe lane for Infamous. So we should be able to get a lot of farm, work towards that Blink Dagger. And, they uh, spotted Bounty. Oh, yeah, they did. He's coming to snipe the, the south, but they saw him. He went on the cliff a little bit, and the turret... Oh my god, did I say turret? The tower saw him. <laughs> I don't even know how they got into my brain. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, god. Well, the courier will stay alive at least, so small victory there for not today. Yeah, he does block the, the large camp here, so that means that if Beastmaster goes back to farm, he's not going to be able to do that for a while. And due to it being a uh, Batrider versus Beastmaster 1v1 here, if Batrider can get a fast 2, they can, he can definitely kill the Beastmaster. Mm -hmm. So up in the safe lane for not today, Lone Druid and Oracle versus the Dazzle Slardar. We'll see how Slardar farms up here. So far getting harassed pretty hard. And at the moment, we'll have a dual lane mid against the Death Prophet, Jerry on the Night Stalker, kind of just rotating through, and Z-Talk doing the same thing, but down bottom, they're going to start setting up onto DDX, one stack of Sticky, and that'll just push him back. Okay, just harassing for now. 
Yeah, it's decent damage. Uh, Beastmaster is going to be okay, though, since he does have pretty high base armor. But he's got to be really careful about feeding these boars. They're very squishy at level 1, and they're worth about 36 gold. So Bounty could accelerate a lot from that. Yeah. Definitely not too bad for the Bounty Hunter. He's very close to level 2 already. Uh, the Prophet almost getting a kill mid. It's going to force us out for the OD here. That's uh, Spirit Siphon, man. The level 2, man. It just trades so much health. So there's a huge salve advantage over Death Prophet at the moment. And in terms of last hits, it's about equal. Yeah. Both people are going to be happy. One concern here for Infamous, though, is that all three of their cores really do need a lot of farm, though. Uh, of course, Sardar and Bat both need that Blink Dagger, and I'm not sure both of them are going to be able to get it at a, in a really timely manner here. It seems like Sardar is going to continue to struggle in this lane with the bear. It's, it's pretty hard to last hit up here. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to hurt him, but on the bright side, the other two lanes are farming decently well, and if Bounty can just get a kill here or there, it can really open up space on the map and force the supports to leave from the top lane. There's going to be a gank on OD here. Oh, yeah, rotate in. Oh, this DP, she's just healing up. That Soul Siphon makes it an easy kill. Elsewhere, Dazzle pops the Shallow Grave here in the top lane. And it looks like he's going to concede the second death here. It makes it one-to-one. -one. Of course, First Blood does go the way of Infamous from that mid lane gank. It was really nicely done by OD as well to ex expect the bounty. As soon as the Spirit Siphon came out, he put the Sentry down, so he'd have some vision on the bounty. You can maybe crit criticize his build, though. Um, he went 102 and he skipped all levels of Astral Imprisonment. Whereas, if he had a skill in Astral Imprisonment, he could have just banished the bounty and actually maybe won the trade. So, I'm not sure that I like his skill build here. I really feel like there's very little value in getting that second point of Essence Aura. But yeah. maybe he finds it better when he's doing the 1v1 oh, trade. Oh. Up top, Slardar maybe in some trouble here on the run and he will fall. The damage from Oracle, just too much. That'll be another kill up for not today. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Greedy. Okay, just putting pressure on DDX, but will not dive the tower. So, nice kill on the Slardar. His uh, Dazzle had to rotate out, and they took advantage of the opportunity. A little bit of a stack here from the large camp that Bounty made. Uh, Barret is going to try to deal with a little bit of it, but... Mid lane. They're going to set up again onto the OD. This time he's got the Astro. Looks like he turned level 4, but Slardar, he's rotated in. Slithering Crush will connect. It's a 3-on-1, and nothing the OD can do. Uh, Infamous strike back and square it up once again. Really great gank from Slardar there. That's something Unexpected. that a lot of players don't expect. Yeah, you just show up to a lane and all of a sudden you're running faster than Boots with Sprint and you get a big stun off. And he's also going for two points in Sprint here just to make sure he's running as fast as possible. Uh, it's more important in a lot of times to guarantee you land the stun than it is for the stun to last an extra point yeah. seconds. I really like the idea though. He's struggling in the off lane. He ends up dying and... He strikes back by rotating and setting up a kill instead oh, of just going work. back to the lane. We'll see up top. Yeah, the bear sets it up. And now Zetok in some trouble. He will live for now, but they've got dust. Now the crush onto Oracle. Grave comes out, buys Zetok some time. Looks like it will just barely keep him alive. Oracle dies first. They trade one for one. Now Jerry in a forward position. The Night Stalker on the run. It just turned nighttime, so he's got some movement speed here. Dazzle trying to eat through the trees, but he's totally dry. No way to TP. Another slithering crush. Goody on the other side blocks him out. One more auto attack. They can't find it. He's fogging him. Now DP is rotated up. Jerry still playing ring around the rosy. But they get the kill on Goody. He's got Excel the heal still alive. He's got another heal. He gets it off. He'll stay alive once more until Glacius comes in. Finishes him off there, but infamous. Not done yet. They want Jerry. Slithering crush catches him, and they get yet another kill. It's Infamous that find the advantage here, and they're not done! There's been a rotation again from Zetok. He's respawned, and they Great go on onto the Oracle. Another crush and another kill for Team Infamous. The DP getting credit for that one. Huge rotations, but Radiant come out huge, and now have a 1,500 net worth lead as a result. That is so typical of how Infamous plays there. Like, really good juking by Excel there. There was no way that they were going to get all three of those kills if he didn't gank so well, or juke so well with those two tangos. Huge props to him. He did still die in the end. But to stay alive that long completely guaranteed the kills on the Oracle, as well as the Lone Druid. So, yeah. absolutely big plays by him. And good rotation from Death Prophet. She grabbed the rune, and she came all the way top. Yeah. And all that time, Greedy was just down bottom, farming away in a 1v1 matchup. So now, all of a sudden, he's number one in last hits. Beastmaster with 14. Not awful for DDX, but he needs to be careful here. There's a lot of neutrals doing some damage. Greedy's starting to stack up the sticky. He's got just one, and oh, not going to be able to grab it. But he will be able to finish off at least two of these big neutrals. And maybe even the satyr. Still farming very well, though. This bat rider is on his way to a, a great timing on this blink dagger. All right. So as the lanes stabilize a bit more, we take a look at the CS and Slaughter has almost nothing. He's only got three CS. But with that said, he's level four. He's got an iron talon. 
he's got two kills and three assists, which is pretty amazing considering how the lane started for him. It didn't go very well. Jerry. But that outplay they did was so good. Yeah. Down bottom, two stacks of Sticky. Now make it three. Bounty Hunter in hot pursuit. Hits him with the Shuriken, but they lose Firefly. This could be a tricky kill to go for. Jerry juking and jiving. It's still nighttime, so he's got the movement speed. Five stacks of Sticky, but oh, in comes DDX with the roar. It'll buy him time, but he ends up falling. Now in comes the OD. Makes it one for one as he finishes off the Bat Rider, but a rotation from the Slardar connects with the stun. Oh no, the Fortune's End keeps him in place. That'll get a kill on Z-Talk. It's a one for two with not today finding the advantage, and now they're just getting ping pong no back and forth. Back comes the OD, Excel taking damage from the tower, but sets it up for the Slardar. Slithering Crush again. Nets a kill on the out Outworld Devourer. What a chaotic fight, but it's just two for two. Yeah, that's, that's infamous games, man. They just <laughs> run at each other the whole time. And they never stop. And it worked out pretty well for them. They overchased on the Night Stalker, but ultimately the haste on the OD lets them outplay. But luckily, Sardar showed up again and uh, landed yeah. a great stun. They just reinforce so much. And if they don't get those kills, it's really costly. But they yeah. seem to consistently catch Not Today outnumbered with these big 3 4 hero rotations this early on. It's like Batrider is the only one that has farm priority right now. It's kind of cool. Is he close to Blink? Um, he's still farming pretty heavily, but. Does, isn't that close? That death actually set him back a bit. And yeah. He hasn't gotten in. Actually, he does have a lot of last hits. He's got 44. I'm just expecting too much out of him, especially because he went Magic Wand, Bottle, and Tranquil Boots. He's bought a lot of early game items. Well, it is going to delay his Blink Dagger. It's going to make his laning stage a lot better. Yeah, I've often heard that it's usually either Bottle or Tranks before Blink, and, and kind of rare to get both. We'll hold that thought, though, as DDX gets dove down bottom. Dazzle comes in with a heal bomb, but oh, the Primal Roar turn. Wild Axes get the kill on Dazzle first. Lasso's deployed to make it a one-for-one. One. Definitely hoping for a clean kill there, and unfortunately, they have to trade. Now up top, Z-Talk. He gets dusted. They're going to dive him under the tower. A couple seconds left on nighttime. Jerry wants to use every bit of this that he can. It'll turn day, but they still find him. They've got the damage, and the bear will finish him off in the trees. That's a kill for Goody. And uh, one for two across the map, and not today finding the advantage. Let's see if they push with this now on the Spirit Bear. He went for a phase, Orb of Venom, Iron Talon build, very standard early game build. Um, and they should be able to pressure the towers with this. They did use Battle Cry, though, so his damage is a bit limited. Surely he's got to feel a little scared, though. I mean, Slaughter's been ganking up a storm this game. Oh, my. This poor OD. It just, you can feel the Death Prophet just bullying him, bullying him in this lane. 46 to 32 in CS, and Spirit Siphon, it, it it makes sense, but it does not get disabled when she gets put into the Astral, so even if OD uses it defensively, it, it still hurts him. I mean, it's not like that's yeah. a, a real get-out-of-jail-free card. Oracle doing everything he can to heal his buddy back up, but... It's really not that weird that the Spirit Siphon goes through the Vanish. A lot of abilities yeah. work like that, like Static Link, but yeah, it exactly. definitely makes it a little harder. I mean, you're still getting taken damage, you're still getting drained. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I meant that as more of a, it's just a hard matchup for OD no matter how you swing yeah. it. Even if he does everything he can defensively, he's still taking big damage. Well, at least his cosmetic items look really cool, this Mushi Seth Baller. Yeah, it's true. I also like what Infamous are doing now. They're going to rotate Greedy into the jungle so he can power farm towards his Blink Dagger. And this will open up the safe lane for the Slardar, who does definitely need that recovery farm, as you were talking about. So he can start making some progress towards his power treads. Of course, a Blink Dagger, BKB, all that good stuff. And after those stacks in the jungle, Bat now up to 1,400 gold, two-thirds of the way there. He'll pop a smoke all by himself. Lasso at the ready. Looks like the rotation target is DDX here in the bottom lane. But did that Hawk actually see the smoke? He's backing up, and that Hawk was pretty close. Though I didn't toggle the vision. Mm. Uh, maybe not. DDX at his okay, tower. Time. Yep, Greedy's got him. Lasso, Slithering they Crush. Stuns. Right into the Firefly. They stack the stuns, but it just doesn't matter. Meanwhile, mid. That was a lot. Ultimate from the Death Prophet used. Z-Talk rotating in. They're going right for the Oracle. He'll dive it with Exorcism. They've got the track. He's level 6 already. And again, the Spirit Siphon with the bats. Almost enough damage even through the defensive play from the OD. Now Z-Talk oh, on wow. the run, but will die to the ultimate of Outworld Devourer. Now Death Prophet just on the run. Exorcism. About 20% duration left. We'll turn around and do a little extra damage to this tower before they retreat. Now around the side. Greedy coming in alongside the Slardar. No lasso here, but Firefly coming up. Here we go. Stacking up the Sticky onto the OD. Tower does go down, and now it looks like Infamous will just try to get yeah, out of roar. here. Roar. I think it's still kept somebody here, but it's, it's just so hard. Could they grab the DP? Spirit Siphon. There's the return. Primal Roar. Big damage coming out from the auto attacks of the Outworld Devourer. Astral used to isolate one. 
Death Prophet will make it out, but now Slardar in the front line gets off a stun on three. Almost gets DDX, but no, can't quite finish him off in time. It's the Bounty Hunter that gets the kill with one long-range Shuriken. Now, Excel and Z-Talk trying to make it out, and it seems they will live. In fact, even turning around to poke for more and put up a few more tracks. They're still kind of just slightly outplaying, not today. Uh, they've also got their mid tower now, so the map opens up a lot for the Bounty Hunter. He did die to that Sentry Ward, but, but it becomes much easier for him to roam now. Level 6, he got a couple track gold kills out of that one, so up to 800 gold on him. It's not amazing, but it can give him some advantage. Yep. Up top, Jerry getting scattered out here by the Bounty Hunter. Once he dings level 6, it's kind of becoming a mobile ward at this point, and sets it up for Greedy. That's a Blink Dagger debut. Has a lasso, but doesn't even need to use it here. Flame Break sets it up for the Crypt Swarm, and Bat Rider will net himself yet another kill. So good work with that bl uh, Blink Dagger. Shows it off, sets it up, and Death Prophet also has her Yule Scepter now. So that first round of core items for Infamous are starting to come out. You know, the worst part there for Jerry was that he was just warding to protect against that kind of a gank. Yeah. <laughs> Bat Rider didn't smoke for that. He just TP'd to the top lane or walked to the top lane, and boom, sets up the kill. So, a little unfortunate for him that he got caught there, because it would have prevented the kill otherwise. Yeah. Seatox scouting out in the lane. Almost sees the Oracle, but actually doesn't quite catch vision of him. Now just pressuring the jungle. Does catch wind of this double stack here by DDX. Instead, they're going to turn their sights mid. It's G that they're going to pressure, but he's got a haste rune. And should be able to make it out just fine. Hmm. Interesting item build as well. Treads, Bracer with an ult talisman just so he can fight early. He gets caught though. Yep, up top DDX. Oh, poor baby. Just too much damage. Meanwhile, on the other side, Slithering Crush actually off the mark trying to grab the OD. They will catch him now. Those stacks of Sticky have been, been deployed. The track also making things a little bit easier. He'll Astral himself, so they focus on the Oracle instead. Pops his ulti, but he should end up going down. Outworld Devourer dies as soon as he comes out of the Astral. And Oracle actually does live from the False Promise, but can't live any further and they will finish him off as he tries to tp out it's a three for nil and it's not today that are in trouble about 2,000 net worth gain here for infamous they just ran him down consistently man though the od couldn't do much he had the he had the haste up but i don't know i i'm not completely sold on his decision making to banish himself but i'm sure he was kind of screwed no matter what he did there yeah. but he just needs to have his teammate back teammates back him up a little bit so that he can get stack up the int and then drop an ulti that kills everybody yeah, and this is one of the weaknesses of OD at this stage in the game. He has mobility issues. I mean, you used to see Force Staff first item on him because it solves some of this problem. You used to see Mech on him, and they're pressuring them really hard. I mean, this is sort of classic Infamous, but when you have uh, a Lone Druid as well as an OD, I, both of them want to farm at this stage in the game. And I mean, Lone Druid is the one that's getting farmed, but it's coming at the cost of, of OD really pulling ahead in the game. Death Prophet number one yeah. on net worth, and it looks like uh, Radiance actually not too far away for the LD. Now, one thing I really don't like about um, an item build or a skill build in this game is DDX doesn't have any points in his aura, which I think is a huge mistake considering you have a Lone Druid on your team wow. and you have an OD on your team. They're all about attacking. Yeah, I mean, you almost always see an early value point. They'll hold that oh, thought as G gets caught by the lasso before he can Astral. Oh my, he's in trouble for sure. Silence will slow things up and he will get off the defensive Astral. Exorcism now deployed. It is level 2. He waited to level 11. They catch the Oracle. He dies side by side with the OD. A fast 2 for nil. Now Jerry underway. You feel that track movement speed bonus as Greedy flame breaks him down. DDX hits him with a primal roar, but now he's left behind. He'll fall third. Jerry on the run. A few more auto attacks from Slardar. Should be able to finish him off, but no. X can't quite get there. And he'll just have to turn tail and run. Buyback now from the Oracle. This will at least be a tier 2 tower kill, I think. No, maybe not on the side. They find Oracle. Glacius ends up falling. It's a dieback for him now. Well worth it for the DP to rotate over. Her ult will fall off, but now this tower is exposed and should be an easy push for Infamous. Oh, no way. Infamous doing crazy stuff and diving bases and running <laughs> people down. It's... Nothing new here, but they're clearly out playing not today. Um, the, they got ready for the banish on the OD, and they just blew up Oracle before Oracle could get his ult off. And it just seems not today is getting super outplayed. They're they're not anticipating how much damage Dyer's that they're going to take, and they're getting killed for it. And they don't yet have radiance. Yeah, and this is where DP is just scary. She's starting to take over the Dyer's game a little bit. Tower. Point booster up, so she's nice and beefy. Number one on net worth and. It's starting to feel like they don't really have the tools to slow her down. DDX on the Beastmaster still doesn't have his Necronomicon, so he's lacking on damage output just kind of in general right now. And you talked about that lack of value point in the aura. Now a Force Staff on the Bat Rider, so he can really isolate somebody even more so than he has been. Tier 1 Tower being pressured on the bot lane. Um, I think the best thing that Natsade can do right now is just wait until the Radiance is up. So try to split push to delay other towers being taken. 
Luckily, the Rex hasn't been threatened because Infamous has been spending so much time running at Heroes, but they need the Radiance and they need to win a fight right when it's up. But it's going to be hard. There's a, a mech up on Bounty Hunter. The Blink is ready on Slaughter now. There's a lot of big items up for Infamous that they needed. And yeah. they were winning fights without this before, so now they've got this extra advantage Radiance that's going to have to counteract whatever the Radiance attack. can provide. And yeah. killing DP with the Radiance isn't going to work very well. It's yeah. just slow damage over time. Exactly. They're not lasting long enough in these fights to even have that Radiance secure the kill for sure. I mean, you press F5, there's a big disparity across those uh, inventories for sure. It's uh, over a 10k net worth lead for Infamous, so it does make sense, but uh, that mech and Blink Dagger in particular, really scary. The Bounty Hunter getting a lot of farm now. 4-4-8, four, four, and eight. so those track kills are adding up, and this is this is a really good Arcane Boots mech timing. Only 16 minutes. Yeah, he's been doing really good. Got a lot of track kills in the last six or so minutes. Been doing a lot on the map and uh, getting a lot of kills. Bottom tier 2 tower. Turn to rubble here. Uncontested. Some more free gold for Infamous. Meanwhile up top, not today, doing a little bit of pushing themselves, but it's Greedy in the front lines, Flame Break grabs the Oracle, pulls him back with the Force Staff, Slardar comes in to stun the OD so he can't defensively Astral, great setup from Infamous, and now they go in onto Outworld Devourer, he falls second, DDX tries to TP home, they'll have a stun, a fast 3 for nil, and of course, uh, uh, of course Infamous defend their tier 1 tower, not today, get absolutely nothing out of that fight. It was a bit of a whiff there by the OD. He should have just banished the, the Barrator when he came forward. He was hitting yeah. him, he was attacking him, but he just needed to banish him. Banish and run. And they didn't do that, and they just got run down. So I think now today's just kind of crumbling here. Yeah, and it's starting to feel uh, close to the end here, Purge. This gold graph is just getting out of control, and it seems every minute that passes, Infamous is getting that much further ahead, pushing, pressuring the last outer tower now, and... There's just nowhere for not today to farm, and that's the, the big problem. Lone Druid's still trying to split in the side lanes. He's got the Relic now, 900 gold up. He almost has the Radiance, but as we mentioned a few times, Radiance isn't the item that makes him scary. Radiance is the item that lets him farm to get scary. Um, eh, more, more or less. I mean, we'll it's still see. a big amount of damage that they have to deal with and something they have to kill, but they've got the solution to it. They've got a ton of physical damage from Death Prophet ulti. And they've got Slardar ulti as well to lower its armor. So killing the bear is going to be a little hard at this stage since the bear is very survivable compared to where he is in the game. But, man, Radiance is not going to do what he needs it to do. He needs it to win in the game, and I don't know if it'll be able to do that. Yeah. I, I mean, if Infamous get hyper-aggressive here, that could be a chance for not today. There's a lot of comeback gold, so one big fight for them could potentially square things up a bit. But Infamous will make the safe play here to just move into the Roche Pit, grab themselves an easy Aegis. They've got a lot of minus armor with the Slardar. So it should be a fast Roche and makes the high ground siege that much easier. I imagine they give it to Slardar here so he can just be aggressive as the frontliner. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty safe. Um, he can... Uh, maybe I mean, DP? Death Prophet is definitely the carry, but... Okay. I just felt like she wasn't going to die. Does she really need it? But it is still just safer to give it to her, just in case. Worst yeah. case scenarios. Yeah, I guess even if she doesn't have her ult and comes back to life, she still has a lot of utility with the Silence, the Spirit mm -hmm. Siphon to do damage here. So we'll see. Set up mid. Batrider goes in, and, well, they're going to show that bear who's boss. They don't quite get the kill, but they do a lot of damage to it. Radiance is up, though. As well as the Octarine. So there you go. Death Prophet, Yules, Octarine, Aegis at 19 minutes. It's pretty good timing here. Um, he's been farming amazing, 7, 0, and 10. He's only got 100 CS, but considering how many kills he has, this is amazing farm for this time period here. I love the smoke wrap on not today's dude. This is the only chance they have. They've got to go on the bat. Can they get the roar off? Here we go. DDX almost catches them, but no, they can't get there in time. X with a stun on three, plus the bear. Now DP Sounds right in the middle of the break. It's broken up by the bat rider flame break. Now he grabs the last one, Outworld Devour. Gets countered right away by the Astral as well as the Primal Roar, but those are two. That's the ultimate. They can't get anything else with it. DDX will be the first one to die, and they just don't have the damage. Infamous sustaining through the Dazzle, doing a lot of healing. It's three dead straight away. And Infamous, still reasonably healthy, excels out of mana, but they can just go right for the base now. Glyph, still up for not, but no buybacks across their three dead heroes. And this should be Elena Barracks in the mid here, Purge. They just maybe could have won that if they got the roar off on the beast on the Batrider, but they didn't have the, the Hawk for Beastmaster for some reason. It must have been on cooldown by the time they went for the smoke. So without the Hawk, they didn't see the initiation possibility, and they got initiated on first by Slardark. And that's going to lead to a very obvious loss. So they lose the team fight, mid racks will fall, yep. and this is just going to get harder. 
Yeah. Good reaction by Greedy as well to get out in time. It really looked like DDX had the range to grab that Primal Roar, but he still doesn't have a Necro book. And even though it was good to try to counter the Lasso, it was the Astral and the ult used for that. So they didn't have any kill power afterwards. Now we'll see a stand here from Not Today. They do start to repel Infamous, Excel taking a lot of damage, but Slardar with essentially a Ravage coming in sets up the kill onto the Outworld Devourer. They trade their Dazzle, but now the big damage comes out. Bat Rider in the middle of the fray. Down goes the Oracle, the Lone Druid, the Night Stalker, and the GG is called. Only 21 minutes of gameplay, and Infamous will take game one in this lower bracket elimination series against Not Today. They'll drop their items there as a victory dance as we watch the throne get destroyed. Very convincing win for Infamous here, Purge. I think they, they grabbed heroes that suit their strengths, uh, Infamous that is, and they, they play the same game that they always want to do, which is run their opponents down and get stuff done. I, I think the person that played the most um, interesting role this game was probably the Slardar, who went to his lane, had a bit of a rough time, but made a ton of stuff happen in other lanes by showing up and ganking. So I think he, he was the, the thing that really put their team ahead and scored some key plays and some key ganks that allowed them to just snowball and run over their opponents. Yeah, no, I totally agree. He died in the off lane, rotated and ganked mid, roamed around a little bit, and then after he got a few kills and supported the team, he just farmed the safe lane. So he was able to find recovery farm actually pretty effectively, which is often one of the considered one of the weaker points of Slardar. So you'll see him. He ended with the Octarine core, so that's good. DP passed it to him to, to make those stats nice and interesting. We're going to have a short break, folks, and we're going to come back for the uh, post-game report here. We'll see what our stats man, Mott Packs, had to say about uh, that, that really long and drawn-out game, and then we'll get into game number two, folks. So stick around. You're watching Canada Cup Season 6. I'm Zayori. He's Purge. We'll be right back.